There's a new version of WordPress that came out this week, WordPress version 5.6. In this video, I'll highlight the notable changes as well as highlight the reasons for to update or not to update. WordPress released their update a few days ago on December the 8th, 2020, and its nickname was an ode to Nina Simone, an American singer, songwriter, musician, arranger, and civil rights activist. Almost like a reminder to what WordPress really is and what it represents. Almost like Simone is a metaphor for open source. Free and for everyone. The previous major update of WordPress, WordPress version 5.5, caused some hassles to plugins and themes with jQuery issues that had a lot of websites break when updating. We had numerous customers reporting issues when they updated their own websites, and in a specific case, we even decided to rebuild a customer's website entirely to avoid any further bugs. Just an add-in for assistance before we continue, WordPress states the following to versions 5.5, 5.6 and the coming version 5.7 that updates to jQuery and WordPress take place across three releases, 5.5, 5.6 and 5.7. As we reach the midpoint of this process, run the update test plugin to check your sites for errors ahead of time. They further state that if you find issues with the way your site looks, example a slider that doesn't work, button is stuck, that sort of thing, install the jQuery Migrate plugin. I'll leave the link in the description. Let me highlight these important points before you decide to update WordPress to WordPress 5.6. First off, make sure you have a backup or make one. WordPress also advises us to do this as a little reminder of its importance. A lot of good hosting providers, depending on the package you have with them, do daily backups of your website, files, and databases automatically. So in a lot of cases, you should already conveniently have one in place. If you're not sure or don't know how to check, send an email to your hosting provider's support department and they will be happy to check for you. If you know your way around your control panel, then simply go do a backup of your WordPress website's files and databases for peace of mind. A second big point to make is around the plugins and themes of your website. These are where the issues may come from primarily, and in fact, this is where the issues arose with the previous WordPress 5.5 version. Developers either didn't support their plugins or themes anymore, or didn't roll out updates in time to make their plugins compatible with the new WordPress 5.5 installation. In any WordPress update, I recommend having a look through what plugins and themes have an update ready before updating a WordPress website. Let me provide a quick tip or word of advice. If you are fairly new to WordPress and a little bit weary of updating, just wait a week or two and then start pushing the button on updating when there is more information and updated plugins to analyze and make an informed decision. So to close these points, don't be hasty to have the new uber cool WordPress 5.6. Be patient, your site won't look noticeably different or perform noticeably better. And even if it did, breaking your website may not be worth the cost. Wait for the theme and plugin developers to update before getting into it. And just to add here, I did notice a performance increase in version 5.6 which I share a quick word about at the end of this video. Now on to what's new in WordPress 5.6. So one of the new additions to 5.6 is the new 2021 theme. Now I have to say I'm excited to start playing around with this theme. Just off the bat it has a fin light and dark mode. That's cool because usually the default themes are kind of boring so that's a good start. It still seems a little bleak though, just scanning through it and I personally don't really use the default themes that come with WordPress. I feel that they just don't offer much and you have to do way too much development which takes away design time so I tend to go with what I trust and I use OceanWP. But I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to try it out. So with the 2021 theme, the light and dark mode feels to be a gimmick currently. Not that it is, but going forward with WordPress in 2021 I feel this will gain relevance later on as this will become a norm with themes. I love dark mode for example because there is less of a strain on my eyes and aside from that my devices use less power in dark mode and I can think of another bunch of reasons why this is a great idea. So currently it's cool and I can't wait to see what else they get up to because I have a feeling WordPress 5.6 is just a bridge to something really game changing which I'll talk about later in this video. Then another new feature to take note of is the option of updating WordPress automatically. 
Now, with WordPress 5.5, they started offering auto updates to themes and plugins. And I'll be honest, maybe I'm just being cautious, but that feels like a bad idea to me, so I simply don't use that option, or at least not yet. Or rather, on some plugins, it can be a good idea to have, but all in all, I'm really cautious with this one, and here's why. Some people don't visit their website often. Once it runs, they let it run and forget about it. So imagine one day you receive an email or a call from a customer notifying you of your site looking all weird. Now, that customer did you a favor by letting you know about it, but you probably lost a lot of potential business because of this little feature that ended up updating automatically and wrecking your site. Unintentionally, of course. Now, I do feel it's a useful function, but only and only if the theme or plugin developer is a well-known and reliable developer. For example, I would turn this on for Elementor, WooCommerce plugins, and of course the prior mentioned OceanWP theme. The same applies to WordPress Auto Update. Again, I'm not worried about WordPress, but rather the plugin and theme developers not responsibly updating their work. So, moving on to another new addition are preference blocks in the builder. I don't generally use this section of WordPress, so I wouldn't be the right person to advise on this new addition. So instead I'm advising a video here with someone that has a better explanation about this. I did pick up a bug though whilst playing around with the editing functions, though it could be my outdated PHP version causing it. It's not a massive issue, but importantly highlights just how flawed a new release can be. And again, nothing major here, but imagine the bugs that may exist that you can't see. For example, security vulnerabilities and so on. We build websites, so I get alarmed when I see a minor detail like this. Moving on. Site health is a function worth highlighting that became available in WordPress version 5.5. I must admit, I didn't really know what to think when I initially read about this, but it is quite useful and maybe even more so for newer users, where it prompts useful things like removing inactive plugins and themes which can make a massive difference in the efficiency of your website, believe it or not. Apart from this, it also advised that I need to update my PHP version to 7.4, which I think is a great bit of advice and I can definitely agree. Then an interesting feature addition is the new application password name which is similar to, for example, first registering for Instagram using your Facebook details and authenticating using those login details. It's not that I'm a fan, and WordFence has reported a possible security vulnerability, but I can definitely say that this is kind of exciting, and I love the direction that we're going in. In fact, I can see that I may end up doing a video for this function at a later time, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. I mentioned this update not being a crazy major update, but rather that it paves the way for something much bigger coming in 2021. WordPress has something in the works that will allow Elementor page builder like flexibility called full site editing, where you could edit your pages, change your header and footer, for example, all within WordPress itself. This will be amazing and I cannot wait till this becomes a thing. I remember the day before page builders where we had to customize themes with PHP and HTML coding and type up large CSS files to make our pages look the way we want them to and was so incredibly time consuming. Then WP Bakery and Elementor came along and these just revolutionized the more basic websites requiring basic website functions. We still do development for bigger customers requiring custom jobs but 9 out of 10 websites are used with Elementor and saves us so much time that we can now build websites at a fraction of the price. Something to make mention of, and I'm not sure if it's just me, but WordPress 5.6 feels incredibly nippy and quick. It just had that fraction of a load time that just seemed favorable. And it's not my development server either. It just feels quicker than prior versions. So apart from you liking it, Google Search Central will love your website for that and may bump you up a spot or two with competing websites running older versions of WordPress. Again, I don't know this for a fact, but it really seems noticeably quicker. So to close, I hope the above highlighted the changes for you. All in all, not a major update by any means, but packs quite a little punch with those new functions. Again, some of it feels gimmicky still, but I'm quite impressed and like I mentioned already, the 2021 update coming up makes next year yet another exciting year for WordPress, though that's nothing new for them. Any new update of anything has its possible flaws, although WordPress developers do an amazing job with their rollouts and are generally near perfect. Just remember, if you do update to 5.6, really consider deactivating that WordPress auto update function for now or at least until 5.6 has been around for a few weeks. 
that's it for me. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.